Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Stefania Spezzati. I'm a Bloomberg News reporter. I cover finance and banking. I'm here with Nick Staransky. Um, hi, Nick. It's nice to have you here. Um, so, Nick is a kite surfer and a swimmer. He studied physics in uh, Russia and then joined Lehman, Brothers, Lehman Brothers at the peak of the crash. And then you went on to Credit Suisse. And then in 2015, you started Revolut. Um, I believe you are under 40 years old, uh, but you are already leading the biggest private technology company in the UK and one of the largest in the world. Um, it was valued $33 billion um, in the last funding in July. Um, so, Nick, can you tell our audience how did you make it? Um, can you tell us what's the secret of your journey so far? Well, to be honest, no, no secret, just working hard and looking for opportunities and they're executing on opportunities. Where do you see, where do you see um, Revolut going forward, like in the next three years? Where would you like to see the company going? So longer term, we're trying to build uh, uh, one simple app which allows people to get access to all the financial services they need at the price either free or significantly cheaper compared to banks. And all these services, they, they talk to each other, and then uh, they're personalized. So at the moment, uh, the problem that I see in the world, that uh, you've got bank account, you've got trading account, insurance account, uh, uh, you've got your pension in the, in the fourth provider. They don't really talk to each other, and uh, pricing is usually, well, not good for you as a, as a consumer. So we're solving this problem by giving you one simple ARP and allowing you to get access to all the services that you need. And services are also highly personalized. So that's, that's effectively the problem that we're solving. Mm -hmm. So you want to have everything in one super app, app you often mention, is that right? Um, is there, how far are you from reaching this goal? Well, we, we, we've got quite a few businesses to build. Uh, so we still need, need to build uh, insurance business, uh, pension business. Uh, and obviously, uh, well, the, these are products. And on the geographical expansion, so one now in 35 countries, uh, and then uh, yeah, another probably 50 countries will take us five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you are at the moment in about 30 countries, though, right? 35 countries, yeah. And you have recently launched as well another service in, uh, in the US. Uh, it was free commission trading. Yeah. So you kind of want to go and challenge big player like Robin Hood and others like, uh, of that um, that size. Um, do you think the UK is missing out in this kind of market or uh, is that possible to see something similar coming to Europe? Uh, well, to be honest you, when I see competition out there, right, so obviously, you know, one of the most best companies are in the US. So you've got uh, Cash Up, you've got uh, Robinhood, and then in, in China, you've got uh, uh, WeChat, uh, Alipay. So I think in terms of uh, uh, sophistication, so I'm pretty sure that you know, UK companies are as sophisticated as uh, US companies. However, I think uh, Chinese companies are far ahead uh, compared to, to Western world purely because, uh, I don't know, they are so much larger and uh, they are 100% digital. Plus adoption of population is 100% as well. So everyone in, in China is paying with uh, WeChat or Alipay. Mm -hmm. Understood. So um, uh, you're also asking for a uh, um, uh, banking license in different countries, uh, in the UK as well, in the US. Um, so why a company like Revolut wants to get a, a banking license? Is it not going towards a, a model that is very similar to what you don't want to become, like you know, traditional banking? Yeah. Several reasons. Reason number one is uh, that we, we want to own our, our consumer wallet. And then uh, you, you cannot do it without uh, being a bank because our consumers uh, trust banks and uh, obviously we're a very young company so we're six six years old and then uh, competing with uh, banks who are 150 years old on trust is uh, is very difficult so one of the major milestones for us is to to get a banking license to increase level of confidence and level of trust uh, in in our business mm -hmm. so yeah banking is about trust you know sometimes yeah. in the uk they say it's easier to change house rather than a banking account um however you already have 60 million uh uh, 16 million uh, uh, current accounts. I think you started from, obviously from zero at the beginning of your journey. I'm told that you and your colleagues were at train station giving Revolut cards for free. Um, coffee shops. <laughs> coffee <laughs> shops. Free, free coffee plus a card. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you actually increase the penetration, in, uh, especially in the UK, which is such a difficult uh, market? 
to balance your, in, in some countries we're moving very fast, in some countries we're moving uh, slow. I think it's correlated uh, whether we're having a large team on the ground or not. Just to give you an example, in, uh, in Ireland we, uh, uh, we have 60% penetration, so more than, uh, if you take 10 adults, six, six adults in Ireland will, will be using uh, Revolut products. And then recently we're also the, the most uh, downloaded app in, in Ireland ahead of Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and so on. So yeah, in, in some countries we're moving very fast, in some countries uh, we, we are slower, but uh, I'm pretty sure we get there, it just you know, takes time and uh, a bit of uh, marketing spend as well. Mm. Your marketing spend has not been that tight so far, I and mean, you, you're always yeah. being kind of more on the, uh, you know, let the product basically go yeah, yeah. in the market. So do you plan to increase the spending in marketing? Please? So usually we, we, we relied on uh, building great products and uh, organic uh, growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, we definitely penetrated early adopters and maybe a bit uh, of general population. But I think to, to go deep, to, to achieve uh, 30, 40, 50, 60% uh, penetration in every single country, you do need to, to spend on marketing, on building brand, or on building trust. Mm -hmm. That's what we slowly started doing. Mm -hmm. So which country is, this, is the more uh, leg regulatory friendly, or has been so far? Uh, no if one. there is any. <laughs> no one. <laughs> Um, how, how far are you from getting the UK banking license? How, how long is the process you think is going to take? Uh, so we, we applied for banking license almost a year ago. So generally, uh, timeline is uh, one year. So we, we should get feedback in November, December this year. Okay, so quite soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the US? Uh, US, uh, we submitted our dra draft license uh, a quarter ago. And then we, we, we plan to submit a uh, full, full application, either Q4 or Q1. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, if I might, I want to take a step back and, uh, you know, trying to understand your view about traditional banking. Um, obviously, you went through the crisis at Lehman Brothers. You've, you've seen so many changes in, in the financial sector. Technology has increased. So many company, new companies have, have emerged, fintech companies. So what do you think, like, traditional banks should do to stay in the game and, you know, to not lose their business? Well, to be honest, for, for them it's very hard, so I, I, I can't really see the path of, of it happening. Because they're, they're a huge organization with a lot of uh, legacy systems. Mm -hmm. uh, plus they have uh, not thousands, but tens of thousands of people. And uh, just to completely change their business, uh, they need to, to do a huge turnaround, starting from systems and finishing with people, right? And if you have 50,000 people organization, Changing 60 to 80 percent of people are, is uh, is very hard. It takes you know tens of years. So it's like more cut, um, cutting cutting jobs and cutting costs. So the, uh, well, not necessarily you know cutting jobs, but you know just hiring different types of people. Because mm -hmm. I mean, in reality, in modern world, you, you don't need bankers, right? You need uh, software engineers, or you need designers, you need product people, uh, and then are people who who are traditionally hired by banks. Uh, uh, well, they. Uh, they're just not, uh, not tech people. Mm -hmm. So banking changed completely. Banking is now uh, a tech game rather than a banking game. And then uh, if, if you want to be in a tech game, you need to, to hire different types of people. Mm. And talking about hiring, uh, obviously we had Brexit and uh, I'm talking about the UK and we also, of course, the pandemic and COVID. Um, I think the UK has seen one of the biggest outflow uh, since the Second World War. Um, uh, are you struggling to hire talent? Do you think London has changed, or can you still find the right people here? I mean, to be honest, for, for us it wasn't a problem, because uh, as, as I mentioned, we have 35 countries, so we have entities in every single country, so we can hire in uh, in majority of these countries. So not necessarily hiring in London, but also outside. Mm. Uh, I think uh, during COVID we actually grew from uh, 1,600 people to almost 3,000 people, so we almost doubled headcount, and the majority of these people were hired actually are outside of London, uh, either remotely or in, in other countries where we're in. Mm -hmm. So the flexibility and the working remotely, I guess, it's also helping out, you know? Yeah, it, 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 COVID actually helped a lot. It uh, opened eyes on uh, what is possible and uh, not really limiting ourselves to talent that we have uh, in the UK, but uh, hiring globally, just hiring the best people. Mm. Well, where are you hiring the most at the moment? Hiring the most in the moment. Uh, Maybe hard to say. I mean, we well, we, we actually opened recently India entity, and then we already hired there uh, almost 200 people there. So maybe India is uh, the fastest in terms of growing headcount. Uh, mm -hmm. No, we're we're hiring globally. I wouldn't say there is any disproportion. So we're, we're still hiring a lot in London and Europe or US. Uh, 
India as well. Yeah. Do you think London is still the place for uh, uh, technology and you know new things? And uh, even if there's been Brexit and you know some financial institutions are kind of living going through you know towards Europe because of reg regulatory um, demands. Um, have you seen a big change in, in London? Into, into to be honest, you know, I, I I don't see any friction uh, after Brexit in terms of talent or funding or, or just you know freely moving people. Also, uh, the new. I think some kind of tech visa was introduced, uh, which actually allowed companies to bring in uh, even more people. So in terms of friction, I haven't seen anything uh, after Brexit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are those tech visas actually working? I mean, are they in place already? Are you using them? Is Revolut using them? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So does it work? You can just hire from another country? Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, we, we, we don't see the problem of, you know, or, or, well, say, importing people from one country to, to UK. Mm -hmm. And your company as well, um, so you have adopted a flexible approach uh, to working from home, working remotely. I think you're giving your employees the chance to work for uh, away for, uh, abroad for, uh, for two months. Yeah. How is that going? No, it's good. I mean, uh, to, to be honest, you're, as soon as you have uh, systems in place, when you have uh, well, metrics, KPIs for every single team, individual, uh, department, company level, then it uh, just doesn't matter. Uh, where people work because uh, ultimately what, are, what matters are numbers, right? And then if, if, if the numbers are moving in the right direction, then uh, everything is good. If, mm. if, if numbers are not moving, that you know, means maybe either people are not working too hard or maybe you know, people are not the right ones and so on. But uh, the most important thing is to have uh, controls in place, right? And then whether people uh, come to the office or not, it doesn't really matter. Mm. So, so is your office still kind of full or it's empty or how many people are you... Uh, it actually became more crowded. I, I'm surprised. During COVID we had uh, maybe 5% you know, of people, now we have 20-30% of people coming to the office. 20%? Yeah, in London. Mm -hmm. okay. do, you, do you plan to increase that number? Uh, well, I don't know whether it will increase. It's uh, up to people. But ultimately, we're introducing uh, certain uh, office events. For example, we, we, we used to have uh, Thursday Thursdays when our uh, end of every month or uh, the whole office you know, had, had drinks. So we are introducing it to encourage people to at least you know, come for drinks with their colleagues. So we're having you know, parties as well to, to invite all the people in multiple offices. So all, all, all this event gathering, uh, uh, things we, we do obviously to, to ensure people uh, not only work remotely, but also meet, meet their colleagues. But otherwise, it's going well working remotely. It's, it's actually became more efficient for us. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so obviously, you know, um, achieving such a huge uh, success and building uh, such a great company uh, takes many uh, extra hours of work and probably weekends. And um, so my question is, how do you retain talent in such a demanding uh, environment? Well. You pay them well, that's number one, right? Uh, uh, number two, uh, you hire the best people who really want to change things, and then you need to have an interview process targeting specific, uh, specifically these people who, who really are hungry, who are ambitious, who, who want to change things, who want to achieve things. Uh, and then, you, you, as I mentioned, you, you pay them well, right? As a result, you, you end up having this uh, specific cohort of people in your company that really do things and uh, they, they build products, they build products fast, mm -hmm. then uh, they, uh, they're fast on competition. Mm -hmm. um, talking of competition, uh, there are so many banks that are launching new products in the UK. I think JP Morgan uh, um, last week was one of those. Uh, they have a new digital bank uh, called Chase. Um, there are obviously many others uh, that have all the same um, offering. Um, where, where do you see Revolut like in this landscape, competitive landscape? Um, do you think, uh, you know, what's your winning card? Why people should choose your company instead of going towards, you know, another digital bank? Well, we, we really care about customers. Uh, we are extremely customer-centric company. So we, we even have for our cultural value, one of five, which is deliver wow uh, to a customer. And uh, the amount of time we spend on the product and on optimization is, uh, is just ridiculous to us. And then if you look at our product and compare it uh, versus uh, other banks, so I, I do think that we, we have the best product uh, and the best pricing for, for consumers. Mm -hmm. Do you think, is there M&A in the future for Revolut? I mean, we, we actually done, our, well, almost done like two, two or three uh, small acquisitions purely either acquiring or for certain niche products or for, for licensing. 
inside the market. So we, we, we are doing it, but uh, we are doing it quietly. Mm. So which kind of products? Can you elaborate a bit? Our inventory management system, so for, for our uh, Revolut business accounts, so the idea is that as soon as you um, have business bank account with us, we give you everything to run your business, uh, which includes acquiring services, banking services, uh, effects, obviously, payments, team management, card management, or connectivity to all the third-party software, uh, being a sales channel for you as well, plus uh, we want to give you inventory management and the website builder. So in, in, in certain niche products, instead of building, we, we, we try to buy. Mm -hmm. Would you ever buy anything from a traditional bank? Like portfolio of clients? On or the or license. Or yeah. <laughs> All right, so because there is too much legacy cost. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it does not make sense. Has yeah. any traditional banks like legacy banks approach you for uh, any I don't know, merger or uh, for acquiring some part of your business or some products? Maybe several years ago, like three, four, five years ago, there, there were some conversations, but uh, yeah, I was always uh, strict that you know, we went out for sale because there is opportunity is so huge. So why would you settle for something you know, very small? Mm -hmm. um, are you planning any other funding? No, not really. No. Mm. Are you using the money that you got from the previous funding? Like, where are you investing the most? Um, to be honest, we, we as a company are, are profitable, right? So we, we raise money for maybe some future potential capital requirements for our banks in, in the US, Australia, UK, and maybe uh, to, to accelerate uh, growth as well through, through brand marketing, TV campaigns, uh, above the line and so on. Mm. Is there um, any plan for Revolut to get into um, the buy now, pay later sector, which is so hot at the moment? I mean, I think Klarna has a even bigger valuation than Revolut, um, uh, over 40 billion. Um, so is your company going towards that market? And if not, why not? So yeah, yeah, we, we I mean, obviously we, we run like at least like 10, 20 bets within uh, the company. And uh, one of the bets is our buy now, pay later. Uh, so it's still early stage. Uh, but I do think our product uh, will be uh, as competitive, even even not, not more competitive compared to Klana. Mm. So it's going to be the same product like buy now, pay later? It's going to be something similar to that. Uh, it will be better in, in the sense that uh, you can use Klarna only with uh, merchants where Klarna is set up, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about there are millions of merchants, Klarna maybe stop with within you know tens of thousands, maybe 30, 40,000, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe they have two, three, three, four percent uh, uh, set up share, and they particularly target the fishing industry. So our product would allow you to buy now, pay later with any merchant. Mm. So when are you launching it? Uh, well, we, 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 we're still working on it and uh, it's uh, early days. Mm. Is the regulator co concerned about it? I mean, I know that there are a few concerns because you basically, you know, there are uh, young people just loading up debt and just buying and buying and, uh, you know, there are no, why traditional banks have to do uh, affordability checks and uh, yeah. so... Uh, so our, our product will be fully regulated or under either create license or, or banking license. So if you compare us with Klarna, Klarna is obviously unregulated. Uh, we will be regulated. In the UK? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in the UK and other countries. Oh, okay. So it's going to be like Euro a European product or more like US? And uh, I mean, usually we will launch, uh, uh, well, initially we'll probably launch in, uh, in Europe and then in the UK. Mm, okay. Um, and then another uh, big offering, uh, part of your offering is obviously cryptocurrencies has been very popular. Um, uh, your current, uh, the moment offering about 53 tokens or something like that uh, in your, uh, your wallet um, in the Revolut app. Um, I mean, the Bank of England has been quite vocal about um, risk linked to those investments. And uh, I think they told customers to be careful and be ready to lose all their money if they invest into it because cryptocurrency investment are not protected by, uh, you know, b b protection scheme for, uh, for savers. Um, so how do you balance this? Uh, because obviously you're in talks with them to get, you know, UK banking license and uh, are they asking you specific, uh, do they have specific requests for? Well, to be honest, we, we, we are very careful with, uh, with customers uh, trading uh, crypto. So first of all, we will look at uh, whether a customer is uh, vulnerable or not. So out of uh, well, 18 million customers that we have, we have about 700,000 uh, vulnerable customers. And then uh, uh, there are, well, special kind of, you know, screens 
uh, disencouraging them from trading, especially frequent trading. Uh, also, um, if you look at the uh, size of the positions for every single customer on average, it's uh, very small, so it's about like, you know, three to 500 pounds. So what it means in practice, people like, you know, put a very small portion of their wealth in, in crypto, just as an option, maybe to have upside, but they're also prepared to, to lose it. So we do not see out of our customers, uh, you know, putting a significant amount of wealth in, into crypto. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you, you're not going to limit that, right? You know, any client is, is free to put as much as they like, is that right? So there are certain limitations on uh, frequency of trading. Mm -hmm. uh, for vulnerable customers, again, there are like a lot of, you know, screens to ensure they're not putting a uh, significant portion of their wealth uh, into crypto. So yes, we, we, we do have, you know, quite, quite a few controls to ensure that people are don't speculatively gamble. Mm -hmm. Do you think why any other banks is into it, is offering this? Like, why do you think uh, are just late to the party? Like, I'm talking about, I don't know, thinking about Barclays or, you know, like more traditional banking. Why is not into, into cryptocurrency? So do you think they will get into it? Uh, banks and different business models, especially all the banks, uh, they are in uh, optimization uh, stage and then they're in the business protection stage. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that uh, fintech is attacking and banking are, uh, banks are defending. So they're trying to optimize on their PNL, you know, polish their processes, but they're not in the mode of uh, launching new products. So they'd rather slowly bleed their PNL to fintechs within you know five ten years, uh, rather than you know try to to fight with them. Because the reality, uh, like if you look at management of the banks or mm. or like you know board of directors. Like people will be there what, for on average like three, four or five years, right? And uh, there, uh, that target is uh, one year, maybe three years, right? So they don't really think long term. The way they think uh, uh, probably is uh, like, how can I kind of you know, minimize PNL loss within the next three years while I am in the bank, right? Mm -hmm. to, to, to receive bonds and so on. So as a result, uh, their best strategy is you know, defending mode for, for three, four years rather than long term thinking, long, long term strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when a company, you know, grows so fast like Revolut, obviously, uh, sometimes it's difficult to keep regulators happy and there are so many compliance uh, um, spend, there's so much compliance spending that you have to do. Um, how is Revolut doing? Uh, it's like, do you, do you plan to invest more in compliance or to hire more in compliance and risk? Uh, so the way we think about compliance and risk is, uh, is the same as uh, about the product, right? We, we try to make automated machine uh, which is independent uh, on people. Mm -hmm. What it means is that uh, the problem why we have you know, so, so, so many failures with banks is, is actually a people problem, right? You know, in some old banks, you have you know, like quite a bad culture when you know, bankers try to squeeze customers. And there are, their product is actually people selling to people. Uh, and then uh, it's, it's always uh, kind of you know, unstable and always dangerous. We're in business when we are selling software. That means everything is automated, and everything is uh, kind of 100% as it was designed. Uh, in, in, in this particular case, uh, risk and compliance means ensuring that your software is designed properly, right? And then you don't really rely on people. And that's a much more stable uh, construction compared to old legacy banks, which we rely on people. Mm -hmm. So as a result, uh, instead of hiring more risk and compliance uh, people, we build uh, more systems around risk and compliance. We're hiring more data scientists in, in risk and compliance, more engineers and so on. Of course, on top of it, we, we, we hire uh, traditional risk and compliance uh, professionals, but a uh, portion of our investment spend on uh, traditional risk and compliance people is actually much smaller compared to our investment in technology and risk and compliance. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the future. It's all about automation. Mm -hmm. It's all about AI as well in risk and compliance. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then, um, what would you like to see your company listed? Uh, I mean, we, we don't have plans, but you know, as, as we're venture funded, so probably in a few years' time. Mm -hmm. And where? In, like, in, which, in, in London or in the US? or? I mean, we do what makes sense, where we can you know, get our better terms, better liquidity. So maybe US, maybe UK, maybe both. Mm -hmm. um, if you could change something uh, like tomorrow in regulation in, the, in London, uh, what would you like to see changed? Like if you could just call, ring up the regulator and say, I want to change this, what would, would that be? Uh, well, ultimately, I think that the key is to ensure that uh, a regulator or KPI is not only uh, kind of you know risk reduction, 
but also competition. And then there are clear and measurable uh, metrics uh, that tell you know, how regulator is doing against these two goals. As soon as uh, these goals are vaguely defined, there are no metrics, no KPIs. Uh, it's very hard for, for new companies to, to get licenses in the regulated environment, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So basically making it easier to get a license. Yeah, making the system uh, much more uh, transparent and much more uh, kind of you know, quantifiable rather than you know, vague. Mm -hmm. is, uh, is traditional banking taking you seriously now? that your company is valued more than 33 billion. I think it's more, this is more than NatWest. Mm. Yeah, maybe, I mean, relative banks are large organizations that are 50,000 people, 100,000 people. So are they all taking us seriously? Probably not, but maybe some of them. They will fit the competition, I guess. Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, if you could buy a FinTech company right now, which company would you like to buy? Which company would I like to buy? Interesting. Mm. Uh, for any budget? Any budget, like you can just get it. Uh, maybe I will buy Klarna. I think it's a good <laughs> business here. <yeah. laughs> right, so you will have the buy now, pay later, it's yeah. already integrated. You get it faster, yeah. Mm. Do you think big banks should merge? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, it just uh, it, it reduces competition and mm. uh, it's just not for, good for consumer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, my last question is, uh, what was the toughest challenge so far at Revolut? For you. That is a challenge. I mean, ch challenges are changing every every month. Even you know, maybe even for, like for different stages of the company, you have different challenges. I think the the same challenge is always uh, the same, right? Is uh, is getting the right people or fast enough? So uh, hiring the right people is probably you know the biggest challenge in any business, not only fintech. Okay, good. Thank you so much, Nick. It was great to talk to you. Um, is there anything else you would like to tell to the audience? Um, any news coming out of your company soon or any new product? I said maybe the buy now, pay later. Uh, well, I mean, we, we, we have tons of products, obviously. And uh, yeah, as soon as uh, we release them, we'll let you know. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.